All right, so I'm going to admit everyone. Yeah. Okay. Oh, someone else. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hello, and welcome today. Hi, Rick. <laughs> Thanks for being here. We're just letting everyone in the room, and we'll get started in just one minute as we let everybody in. Great registration today. So we're just taking a second to make sure everyone can get in. Um, as you're coming into the room, we hope you'll please introduce yourself in the chat. Please acknowledge the indigenous land where you reside. And if you'd like, share a link for folks about uh, what you do and where you work and so folks can connect with you. Hello, all who just joined, welcome. Hello, we're asking that everyone please introduce yourself in the chat. All right, it's great to see so many folks here. Hi, Josiah. <laughs> all right, welcome all. Everyone is, <laughs> Everyone's coming in still, but I, we're going to get started. Um, we'll start with some housekeeping. Um, so good afternoon and welcome to Californians for the Arts fourth regional conversation program, which are taking place virtually and in person uh, in regions across the state this winter. Um, our last program was earlier this year. So if you joined us then or are here for the first time, thank you for being here today. Um, so my name is Kara and I am the manager of programs and organizational advancement for Northern California at Californians for the Arts. And I'm zooming in um, from the land of the Nisanon folk, uh, people. I'm joined today by my colleagues here. I'm just gonna ask them to quickly raise their hands. Uh, Terry, Eduardo and Julie and Tracy, who you will also be hearing from today during the program. Californians for the Arts also has a fantastic board of directors that represents the arts across the state. If any board members are here today, I ask that you'll also please raise your hands. Hi, we're grateful for you. Um, and thank you as well to any of our members who are here today who help keep our programs free to attend. And Eddie, if we could go to the next slide, please. This is our agenda for today. Um, we'll be sharing a lot of information here today, and we have a, a a session just to hear from you as well. And today's uh, program will be recorded. The slides, resources, and recording will be slide with will be shared with everyone who registered um, following the program in an email. So we're going to kick off uh, with some updates from C California City Arts and California Arts Advocates. Then we have a moment where we want to hear from you. We also have a field survey, uh, and then we have a special section today. Where we're going to hear about some regional initiatives. Eddie, if we could go to the next slide, please. We also just wanted to share some meeting guidelines to, to set the tone for the space today. We have a lot of folks present. Um, questions are welcome at all times. Please, if you if you ever don't feel comfortable speaking up, you can enter comments and questions into the chat or follow up with us directly. Our contact information will be provided in this deck at the end. Um, and please just be respectful of your fellow advocates here today. Uh, so again, thank you for being here. To get the conversation started, I'd like to hand it over to CEO of Californians for the Arts and California Arts Advocates, Julie Baker. Thanks so much, Karen. Welcome everyone. I'm Julie Baker. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Uh, my title here is CEO of Californians for the Arts and California Arts Advocates. And I'm coming today from the unceded land of the Nevada City Rancheria Nisanon, otherwise known as Nevada City, California, about an hour outside of Sacramento. Um, I just quickly, I'm going to give you an, ten, about a 10 minute overview of some of the things that all of us have worked together to achieve in terms of advocacy, as well as resources that you can access today in terms of grants from public funding opportunities. Um, and then we'll get a chance to do some Q&A on that specifically. Um, so here's just an overview of our two organizations. Uh, California Arts Advocates is a C4 lobbying organization where we work to, to represent and influence um, the legislature and the administration to support and invest in the arts, culture, and creative industries and workforce. So that's really where we're working on legislation specifically. We're working on budget items specifically. We're working on educating policymakers to who we are, what our needs are, and what we can do to help 
California to achieve all of its uh, dreams uh, in terms of its progress uh, to serve all people of California and its goal towards equity. And Californians for the Arts is more uh, of a C4, C3 organization, your typical uh, nonprofit organization. Um, and there it is that we're really teaching people how to be effective advocates, how to be effective in your region, in your local community at the state and federal level, and also being that bridge to the state and federal so you understand what's happening there that you can access. Because um, there's a lot of great programs happening in the state of California in particular that we want to make sure that you are aware of. So we'll get going into that now. So just quickly over the last several years, we've had some significant wins. And when I say um, uh, recent advocacy wins and who, who achieved those, that's all of us together. Advocacy is never one organization alone. It is never one person alone. It is all of us um, working uh, in collaboration and as a coalition to represent a unified message to uh, policymakers on what our needs are and how we can be effectively part of a solution. In the last several years, I don't have to share that, of course, it's been a difficult um, several years Years, both uh, with COVID. And so we were able together to realize over $600 million coming from the state of California invested into arts recovery. We saw the first ever creative workforce bill signed by the governor in 2021, authored by Senator Ben Allen from Santa Monica. We uh, this year saw $30 million in cultural districts uh, uh, invested, $25 million in arts and parks. A new bill signed just this year, um, authored by Senator Ant uh, Portentino, um, Anthony Portentino, and signed by the governor in, uh, just at the end of September, and that's the Equitable Payroll Fund. We've seen this year another $20 million invested in cultural institutions, relief funding, and expanded uh, eligibility for the California Venues Grant. And you'll see in the middle our messaging around artists or second responders. This has been a very effective message within the legislature to really illustrate the impact of what artists and cultural bearers and creative workers can bring uh, to California. Next slide. So just quickly, I want to give you some of what is currently available uh, and still open or reopening soon. Now, these programs are all available through the California Office of Small Business Advocate, not through the California Arts Council. And um, uh, Terry Ball is here today, and she is our grants manager. She will help you if you have applied for any of these or are interested to apply for any of these. She can help you and with assistance um, in, in your application or may that, where that might be in the process. Process. So Terry's going to introduce herself in the chat. And the California Venues Grant was $150 million for live event venues. That program is still open. And in this last year, we actually worked on what we call cleanup legislation to expand the eligibility for that. So if you've applied and you're stuck in limbo, for sure reach out to Terry. If you haven't applied because you didn't see, think that you were eligible, uh, you should definitely take a look at the website, but also um, ask Terry um, for advice there as well. Those are grants up to $250,000. In addition, there's nonprofit performing arts grant, and that also um, is for grants to help, in this case, with payroll um, and payroll related costs. That's grants up to $75,000, and that's still open as well. And funding is still available in all, both of these programs. So please, if you thought maybe you are eligible, please let us know. And we really want to do what we can to help you to apply. And then cultural institutions, if you remember way back in the beginning of the pandemic, we had the California Relief Grant Program. 50 million was set aside for cultural institutions. 20 million or so remains in that fund. They wanted to put it back into the general budget. In other words, not for cultural institutions. We fought to keep that inside of um, the, for our sector, illustrating how hard hit we've been. So we anticipate that this will be reopening. That's grants for up to $25,000. If it remains undersubscribed, in other words, it, we don't um, get rid, get uh, expend all the $20 million, the repeat grantees may be awarded. This was some of the cleanup language that we worked on on our C4 side. On the C3 side, we're here to help you with assistance and to let you know that this is uh, available. Next slide. All right, so there's also been, and, and a lot of this is stuff that, you know, part of the reason why we do regional conversations is number is to really hear from you and to understand what's going on in your community or within your organization or for you as an arts 
artists or arts worker um, and what your needs are that public policy can help solve. And you know, in the last several years, in uh, January 1st of 2020, Assembly Bill 5 became law in the state of California. And this really changed how you can um, uh, declassify employees. And it really made it more difficult for arts organizations to continue to classify um, many, and particularly in the performing arts, as independent contractors. And we saw a, a great uh, increase in what it costs to put on uh, shows and to do and to continue operations. And so um, although we fought for many years for an exemption, we then shifted to the recognition that all, at the same time, we really want to ensure that arts workers and artists and performers are paid a living and thriving wage. And therefore, we really getting an exemption may not be in our best interest, but what is in our best interest is to increase funding for the arts and to address the impact in order for people to be paid that living wage. So SB 1116, which was signed this year by the governor, is an exciting bill that was really grassroots driven. We were there to support, but absolutely grassroots driven. That has um, been signed. It is a tiered payroll reimbursement for small budget nonprofit performing arts organizations with budgets under $2 million. Now, let me just say, however, we got the bill signed and we say we, again, all of us together, including people like Terry and, um, and others, I'm sure are on the call, it is not yet funded. So next year in the budget process, you'll probably be seeing us all trying to get more funding for that specific bill in order to address that. In addition, some of the ways that we've been looking at legislation to help ease the impact of um, the AB5 is a paymaster program. And that is if you, again, are under $2 million and all of a sudden you've gone from uh, 30 people as independent contractors and 30 on um, payroll, you've got workman's comp, you have to consider unemployment insurance, and maybe you don't have the staffing to do that. A paymaster does that for you and becomes the paymaster of record, payroll of employee of employer of record. We actually just received the contract through the California Arts Council to build the California Nonprofit Paymaster Program. We're very excited. We're going to be introducing that early next year. So if that's something of interest to you, please also continue to reach out to us and let Terry know that that's something that uh, you would be of interest um, to, to be a part of. Next slide. All right, so you're gonna see um, hear from some representatives today. We're so excited. This was the largest one-time appropriation to the California Arts Council, the state arts agency, for $60 million that was in the budget last year. Our organization, among others, really worked to um, socialize this concept to the administration. The administration absolutely ran with it. And then in the, that year, we saw that in, in initial um, appropriation increased to $60 million. Now that has been distributed to 14 organizations across the state of California, approximately $5 million each, um, to do re-granting in their communities. And you will hear from uh, some of the folks here today who received that, what they call Administrating Organizational Contract, or AO contract, and uh, they're going to share with you some of their initial ideas and then um, and when it gets to time when those grant uh, programs will be open. Very, very exciting to see how artists and uh, arts organization um, can be um, uh, utilized in terms of workforce, not only workforce recovery for uh, underemployed artists, but really in terms of fueling positivity, gaining public trust, inspiring safe and healthy behavior across California through these different buckets, um, which are public health and uh, public awareness related to water and energy, climate preparedness, civic engagement, social justice and community engagement. So very exciting program for the state of California. We're thrilled that the legislature and the governor put such an investment in it and we're excited to see it roll out here in the state. Next slide. Um, again, I mentioned 628 already. This is also an unfunded mandate. In other words, we have it in law that it says that Cal um, creative workforce is a state priority. However, it is not yet funded. So you'll be hearing from us when we go into what we're going to be doing, uh, fighting for next year, that we are looking to get this funded so we can really work on um, thriving wages, living wages for um, our workforce, but also to diversify the workforce. It really focuses on 
on um, employment for communities that have experienced barriers to employment in the creative industries. Uh, so that's a very exciting bill, historic, the first ever creative workforce development bill in the United States. Um, and uh, we are looking to make sure that that gets funded and we can get that program out into our communities. The other thing I wanted to mention, if you are an independent um, arts worker, uh, you file a 1099 during a, the um, height of the pandemic, uh, there was pandemic unemployment assistance. This we think is something that we want to continue to look at in terms of arts workers um, that remain independent. Um, and so uh, Senator Allen also has introduced a, a, what became a feasibility study that examines that idea and how could we continue that going forward in the state of California. So we're gonna keep track on that. And that's going to be happening in the next year. Next slide. I mentioned cultural districts also had been an unfunded mandate for uh, about seven years um, in the in the state here in California. And we're really excited that again, passed through the legislature and the administration and signed into the budget that um, we have cultural districts funded. There are 14 pilot districts in the state of California. Um, they will um, receive investments from this 30 million, as well as new uh, cultural districts um, will be um, introduced in terms of applications. This is going through the California Arts Council. It is currently in development in terms of um, what the program will look like. I'm certain that if you've got interest in that or if you've got ideas um, in order to ensure that equity um, and authenticity is represented in our cultural districts, Districts, I am certain that the California Arts Council is interested to hear from you, and you can also share that information with us. Next slide. Cultural art installations and parks. This was also included. It's $25 million that was passed in the budget last year. And I'm mentioning all of this so you're aware of all of this amazing opportunity and funding for our sector that's coming through. And there's even more. There's Clean California that was introduced, a $1.6 billion bill in the last several years that includes being able to hire artists um, for public art. And, and so, so there's a lot going on and I wanna make sure you're aware of it because it's not always also just in the California Arts Council, which we tend to look at, but there's this now in Arts in Parks and Rec. So um, we're keeping an eye on that. We've been in touch with them, and they've been saying that look for uh, this grant program to be available starting in early 2023. Next slide. And then finally, some super exciting news. Um, if I could make like the stuff go up in uh, fireworks, I would. Prop, Prop 28, uh, thank you to everyone who worked on this. It was um, just amazing um, support for that. And the ballot measure uh, was passed yesterday, November 8th. That is going to have close to $800 million to a billion dollars a year going to arts education in the state of California. I mean, just, and I just wanna say that this was, uh, you know, done in about a year. <laughs> it's just incredible. The messaging was so on point, and I think it's something we really need to learn from. This was not a $400 million ballot measure. This was not funded at that level. This was absolutely, again, grassroots folks, small organizations, ourselves, we, we absolutely supported it. Create California was right there, putting together great graphics and everything else. And um, of course, the ballot measure folks, but it was really everyone's voice making sure that this was shared and then the messaging around it that really created the impact. So we're really excited to see that um, roll out, as well as last year, three and a half billion dollars were in the budget for arts and music block grants. However, and again, this whole pa packet will be shared with you. Um, these are all the lists of what's in it, which includes things like, um, you know, healthcare costs and retirement. So even though it sounds like an enormous number, they kind of threw everything in but the kitchen sink and called it arts and music. So this is where you're gonna have to get active in your local school districts to ensure that this money actually goes to arts instruction, and um, even with Prop 28, ensuring that it, it's being delivered in, in an equitable fashion within your community. I know we'll be working with Create California, we'll take the lead on ensuring that this is getting done and working with them uh, to educate local uh, folks to how to effectively advocate. All right, next slide. So here we go. I did it. I'm on time. So happy about that. Um, so this is where we're going to pause for a sec. Um, I just delivered a lot of information, hope sort of rapidly, <laughs> um, on all the different things that have happened in the last uh, uh, two, three, two years, essentially. 
um, in the legislature and in public funding. Um, and this is an opportunity for me to stop talking and for you to ask questions specifically about what I just presented. And then I'm gonna go into a little bit more about what is coming up. And then we're gonna have about 15, 20 minutes to really just hear from you just generally what's going on. So um, anybody have any questions? This is your chance or, and if you're not comfortable raising your hand and speaking up, then please feel free to put it in the chat or any observations. It doesn't have to be a question. It can also be a comment or an observation. Can I ask a question? Can, Please. Can I ask a question? I'm unmuted. Yeah, you You're are. Me. I can. Okay, good. This proposition 28, I am a composer that works in California. Would it be something that if I go to some schools and say, hey, let's do a project, let's do some new music and have them collaborate with me, do you think this is something that could fund the whole project? That could, is, there, is it possible? When is the, are the funds going to be available and how can I do it? So um, I don't, I can't tell you specifically uh, ever mm -hmm. yes to that. 80% of the funds will go to certified arts education um, teachers. So certified teachers, 20% can go to um, working with other people in the community, non, other nonprofits, et cetera. I think it would be something that once it gets into the hands of the local districts, and again, I'm not sure how quickly that works. I'm assuming it starts, you're, we're talking about next year. Uh, uh, so next fiscal, you know, January, um, then it's really a question of going to your local school district um, and, or your, you know, and talking to them about how are they going to be utilizing these funds. One of the things that we've all are recognizing is that there may not be enough certified um, arts ed teachers um, for this funding right away. And so that's an exciting thing in terms of uh, workforce development that we're going to be seeing as well in terms of jobs and new jobs, um, but that they can apply for a waiver if they don't have enough certified arts ed teachers. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you bet. I had a quick question. Please. Um, in the segment in which you were talking about that we would need to follow up with local, um, our, our local school districts in regards to the funding that came through with the latest pop position, is there, or do you know of any trainings Mm -hmm. in which that we can get proper messaging out because it seems like any kind of organizing any kind of arts um or or just in general when you're trying to access public funds it's always good thing to have public messaging or just sort of like i, I guess like I, i'm just looking at like yeah. campaigns yeah. throughout the country so i'm wondering what wh where can we go in order to like really really you really be able to access and 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 speak on their needs better absolutely so um create california are our partners who are focused on arts education and um so we'll be working together with them to make sure that uh they'll uh, they do an amazing job of graphics and toolkits and um, and messaging, and I know that they'll be working specifically on this uh, to make sure that all of this good funding um, gets uh, distributed um, equitably within our communities and actually delivers what we um, all work for in terms of going out and trying to get the funding. So um, I would say follow Create California if you're not already. Continue to follow us because we'll work um, very closely with them as well. I'm sure we'll be doing some webinars and things together and trainings as well. Um, and I think what you said is really important. And I think this is one of the things that um, a lot of times people think that once we get the money, we're all good, right? Okay, good. We did all this advocacy and we got the funds. The 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 trick about uh, consistent and effective advocacy is the word consistent. And so we have to actually show up and hold accountable the the uh, folks that receive those funds and so the the advocacy will continue and and I think you're speaking directly to that so uh, you have great partners and create we have all of great partners in create California as well as we'll be working towards um, ensuring that uh, everyone has the tools that they need to access that as we do on all the other funding buckets that I was just talking about yeah James hey uh, so I was just wondering um for individual artists that are applying for things versus um, working with nonprofits that are applying for things, uh, where should the individual artists, um, like what organization should they kind of connect with, a person should they connect with 
um, if they're trying to apply for stuff related to individual artists? Terrific question. So in the last several years, the California Arts Council, which is your state arts agency, has started to do individual artist fellowship grants. So that's an exciting thing to see that's happening at the state level. Um, in addition, I don't know, for example, yet on um, arts and parks, if that will be exactly likely that would go, for example, that $25 million might go through an, what we call intermediary, like a nonprofit or a local arts agency. And then, uh, you know, artists would be um, eligible to apply. There are, I believe, several what we call state local partners on this call. Those are, you've got the state level organization, which is the Arts Council. Then you have your local and regional arts councils or arts commissions. I would say those are a great local resource for you to access. So if you are a um, state local partner, please introduce yourself in the chat right now. So James is aware of you. And then um, finally, I would say that the core program that you're going to hear more about, I'm certain will give access to artists to apply um, for that, that funding as well. So um, lots of opportunities. And then, of course, your, um, also your local, um, you know, um, the city of um, Los Angeles, all, lots of cities and, and the county of Los Angeles have massive, massive grant programs as well. Um, I, I don't have all the detail in every one of those. And um, Arts for LA, um, if if you're in the Los Angeles County region, has some great resources as well. So we'll continue to put that together. I see one more question. I'm going to move on to the next section. Les? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Here we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Thank you. Um, I'm also involved with um, working with a charitable organization that's um, helping a homeless crisis. And I've just um, given them a um, gallery in my museum um, to, to promote their program of helping homeless artists. Um, the, we are now trying to expand what's already being offered, which is just um, printed art. Um, and we're going to expand into, I have um, several hundred um, categories of products. And what I guess what I'm looking for right now is are there funds available to help on this really important cause? And how do I get through the all, you know, other than knowing that there's all these agencies, um, they, uh, it, it, I have been having a difficult time actually applying for grants. Um, the grants that I have applied for took almost a year of filling out applications. I received $5,000. It's not worth my time to spend that amount of time um, for those types of grants. Um, and I, I think, you know, I guess what I'm roundabout saying is, how do we get help getting funded for projects that, uh, that we're already involved in? Um, the organization I'm working with um, for the homeless has been around for 60 years. Um, they're hugely established and helping tens of thousands of people. And my art has sold um, across the country for a long time. So we, I have established art, established sales, yeah. and an established organization. I don't know how to even get... Yeah involved sorry to well, go on no that's okay and i'm gonna i'm just have to i'm sorry to cut you off because we have so much ground to cover here today but sure. um i don't think that your concerns are yours alone uh this is a pretty consistent feedback we receive in terms of where to find grants how to do them in a way that are accessible and easier for people to apply for and um and and this is a consistent issue and then uh, grant assistance and technical assistance for grant writing so um we continue to look at that there's a lot of resources that you're probably going to see already in the chat as people are starting to address things like that and that's right. part of the reason and the value of these regional conversations is for folks to start, show up in that way I'm going to pause um, Priscilla and Josiah, and I apologize, but I'm going to go into my next piece of the presentation. We will have more time to have conversations, so I promise we'll get back to you. Um, so I just Thank wanted you. to go now. 
Thank you, Les. And so I just want to go quickly into who we are on the California Arts Advocate side. And those who know me um, have seen me many times on Zoom and know that I have a, a really wide selection of colorful glasses. And, and this is how I distinguish who I am when I'm going into the C4 role. Now I am wearing my yellow glasses and I represent California Arts Advocates. And that's our lobbying side. And that's where we really are working to influence um, policymakers to prioritize in both the California budget in legislation, in resources, in all the different state agencies, um, our industry and our workforce. And these are some of our goals, support sustainability. Again, we see a lot of one-time funds, social protections for the creative workforce. We wanna eradicate the cycle of poverty for artists and cultural workers. We wanna get rid of the paradigm of the starving artists and we wanna move into the era of the thriving artists. We want to, we, we fight injustice, we don't want to, we do fight injustice um, as much as we can within our work and fight for racial and cultural equity, both within the arts and in the policies that we support um, at the uh, governmental level. We see that um, what we do, what you all do affects social change. And we, we wanna make sure that uh, our policies reflect that in terms of what we're fighting for. We retain cultural diversity, ensure racial and cultural representation, and reflect an inclusive California art history and identity. So the framework in which we work to build out our programs or the legislation that we're trying to work with legislators around or what we're looking at in terms of budget and working with state agencies is framed by these concepts. Next slide. So, and again, I'm not gonna go through all of this because I'd wanna to get to the conversation, which is really the value of this and you'll get a chance to review this, but this is where we, you know, regional conversations, learning from various relief programs. There are studies like Wolf Brown that is um, in the midst of doing for our state arts agency, the California Arts Council, it has really amazing information. All of these inform then what we take away and start to think about in terms of what are we gonna do and what are we gonna bring to the legislature and the administration as the issues that are facing our sector, the public policy and public resources now, last year's California budget was $308 billion. So it's not necessarily there's not enough money. It's where is the money being spent and how is it being allocated and who is getting it, who is receiving it. So that's some of the things that we think a lot about in our work towards um, equity and our work towards um, building um, uh, our, our the, the policies that we're fighting for. So you can see some of the listing here, technical assistance as many, we hear this all the time for business operations, access to capital and grant writing for nonprofits and, and individual artists. Funding, we know it's still not reaching BIPOC and rural communities at the level it should in the state of California. We know that our agency is under-resourced. The California Arts Council needs improvement in process. We hear a lot about that and they are aware of it. We know that we need more sustained general operating support, maybe not so much program support and so on. So these are some of the things we think about and that we're, we're, we're bringing up as we're working towards what we can do um, in this next year. I'll go to the next slide. So some of the draft legislative budget asks that we're talking about for next year. So again, this is the C4 where we're working to directly influence what's happening. And right now we're working, we talk to the administration, to, to Governor Newsom's administration, the people who handle what they call the arts portfolio. We talk to legislators, we start to talk to budget chairs, and we talk about what are some of the funding needs for the sector. So one of the ones, um, we were one of the, uh, the sponsors of uh, 628, the California Creative Workforce Act. Very exciting, as I mentioned, but it's not yet funded. So we are looking at um, bringing forward uh, uh, a budget ask for uh, to fund the pilot between 25 and $50 million. This is an extension of the core program in some ways, the California Creative Corps, which you'll hear about, but it's really about creating the core. So it's really about creating that new pipeline of creative workers with an emphasis on living wages and diversifying our workforce. The state agency, the California Arts Council increasing, um, has been at $26 million for the last four years in terms of its baseline budget. We would like to see it go from 26 million to 40 million or a dollar for the arts in the state of California. Um, in, in addition, I mentioned the SB 1116 in terms of the equitable payroll fund. We wanna look for funding for that. It's the state agency, the California Office of Small Business um, Administration, we're looking at a new um, potential legislation or a creatives academy, this idea of how do we um, build uh, the creative entrepreneur and give them access to all the resources that are available. And, um, and we've seen this modeled in other states as a very successful program. 
And then at the state agency, also the governor's office of business and economic development, we'd love to see um, a new uh, task force called the Creative Economy and Cultural Equity Task Force. Um, and thinking about overall, how do we align instead of silo all of the ways that the creative economy influences the state of California and look towards the future? What can we build for the future at creative economy for the state of California through a strategic plan, as it were? We all do these with our own, our own organizations. Maybe we need to be looking at that from the state of California's perspective on the creative economy and through cultural equity. Next slide. <clears throat> Just to give you some quick facts on where we stand in terms of why we think uh, we need to be a dollar for the arts. So you can see um, some of you know where we stand in terms of our value to the state of California. We are seven and a half percent of California's gross domestic product. This is the whole of the creative economy. We're ahead of retail construction and transportation in um, terms of overall value add and, and impact revenue. And where do we compare in funding to other states, for example, is New York and Massachusetts and Minnesota um, are way ahead of us, whereas California is, we're currently at 66 cents per capita in baseline funding. So we'll go to the next slide quickly. And this will show you how many years we've um, significantly increased funding. And thanks to folks like Rick Stein, who I see here today from Arts Orange County, who was our president of California Arts Advocates for many years, and others on, on our board here, Patrick, Brian, and Josiah and Bruni, and others that are here with us today, Edmund Velasco, the board and our organization that until this last four, uh, two, several years was all volunteer, has worked for years with our lobbyists to build the funding for arts at the state level. Level. Um, but what you can see is in the year 2000, we were actually at 30 million. We've remained at 26 million, um, if we count 22, 23, which was this, this year, for four years. Um, that doesn't count the one time special projects, 60 million for the Creative Four, 30 million this year for cultural districts. But really, we'd love to see a dollar for the arts at least. And adjusted for inflation, if you look back to 2000, this was last year's numbers, 44.7. I think we're over $50 million this year if we were to adjust the high um, in the year 2000. The California economy has only grown. In fact, most recently, we um, have, so the numbers look like we're surpassing Germany as uh, uh, the fourth largest economy in the world. So we should, be, in the last 22 years, be able to increase baseline funding for the arts to at least a dollar for the arts. So that's some of the stuff that we'll be fighting for in the next year. Next slide. And we hope that you'll join us. And the other thing I wanted to mention, something really exciting, and we've got representatives here today from an, organ, uh, an organization called California Forward and the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development. Last several years, they were able to um, put in the budget $600 million for the SURF program, which is the Community Economic Resiliency Fund. These are regional based strategies for community and economic development. We've been so, um, grateful and and, um, and thankful that we're able to work directly with them to ensure that arts and culture and the creative industries are a part of not just the end result when, we, when we're asked to paint the um, electrical signs or whatever you know things in your community, but actually part of the planning process, right? So we're at the table. And one of the really exciting things this year is California Forward puts on an economic summit annually. This year it was in Bakersfield. And we were able to um, uh, produce for the first time ever the Creative Economy Working Group. Uh, Californians for the Arts was um, with co-chair Gustavo Herrera from Arts for LA were the ones who put together the Creative Economy Working Group. And these are our four priorities. This is an annual thing um, that we will then Re reintroduce next year. This is a lot of where public policy is incubated, right? Where people are talking about it. what are the great things that we need to do to make California uh, a thriving state for all, for everyone to have access to the, what they call the California dream. We want to ensure that arts and culture and creativity are part of that solution, part of that message, a part of that investment. And uh, we're really grateful to California Forward and uh, the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development, who's really recognized and worked with us very closely to to ensure that this is happening across the state. Next slide. And then I, I certainly I would have to do an entire hour just on federal advocacy because it's just, just so much um, there as well. So again, these are just some of the things that are happening in terms of 
federal funding for the arts, several acts that are um, been introduced, um, including for individual artists, performance, performing arts tax parity act, not TAC, I just noticed that, sorry. Um, and um, some, uh, which would actually increase your filing from 16,000 uh, for what you can, um, to claim to 100,000, but it's actually been stripped from the tax code since 2017 that um, individual artists and creatives can claim these things. So Judy Chu from California has, has, re, has introduced this bill and those sorts of things. So there's a lot there. President created a new committee or reinstated the Committee for Arts and Humanities, um, things like that. So there's a lot of great momentum happening at the federal level, a lot of great momentum happening at the state level for arts and culture and creativity. What I would say is this, What's happened in the last several years has been, in, we've been in a crisis, we came together, we made some amazing things happen. What I would encourage you to do is to stay with us. This is the time to take these from moments to movements. We can change how we are perceived, how we are invested in and how we are valued when we show up in advocacy together. So that is our role. That's what we do day in and day out. And we hope that you'll join us in, in making this happen here in the state of California. So we can see us go from that little $26 million to at least 40 million and all sorts of other things in investments. So I think that's it on my slides for now. Really, again, we're gonna go back to the conversation. Um, and here's where you get to ask either some things about what I just presented or anything else you really wanna just talk about in terms of what's going on and share with us and share with your folks in, within your region um, so that we can um, problem solve together here uh, during this regional conversation. All right, Priscilla. Hi everyone, I'm Priscilla. I'm in Kumaya and Kokopo land. Um, I just had a question about um, I'm wondering if any of these funding opportunities are available to for-profits um, because I'm seeing that a lot of what I'm seeing is for nonprofits. So if there's um, anything that from the two slides that you've mentioned, if there's anything for for-profit art businesses, I'm just curious to hear a little about that. Yeah, that's a great question. And that's part of one of the things that we've been doing in terms of trying to um, so the California Arts Council Charter, the State Arts Agency is more around nonprofits and, and artists, individual artists. Um, a small business advocates, SBA, as you can imagine, um, is around small businesses, which creative entrepreneurs and creative businesses would be um, absolutely a part of. So part of um, right now, what you would have would be, there's a number of funding opportunities through SBA that are for for-profits and nonprofits that maybe not aren't specific to culture, culture, um, arts and culture, but are specific to small business. So um, I'm certain there's some folks here from GoBiz too that could also make sure that um, we're, we're illustrating what those are. Um, specifically, I don't know if this applies, but you know, live venues. Uh, so I don't think you run it necessarily around a live venue, um, but that 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 program is for for-profit and nonprofits. Um, and then um, again, I think that that's part of what we're looking at. And I'm really grateful that you brought this up is that one of the things that we're really trying to build here in the state is that we are an industry that encompasses individual artists, creative workers, small businesses, and nonprofits and for-profits. And that's sort of different than let's say like the restaurant industry, right? Which I think most 99% I would imagine are for-profit uh, have a similar business model. We're really, really diverse in the way that we work. Um, and a large part of that is educating uh, or, uh, state agencies like OBIS, Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development and SBA to understanding the specificity of what it is to be a creative entrepreneur, which might be different than other industries. So that's also Priscilla, why we are looking at this idea of a specific program under SBA that would be for the creative entrepreneur. And out of that, a certificate that potentially would also be a, a grant of like $10,000. So that's one of the things that we're looking at building here in the state of California. Would that be of interest? Yes, definitely. Perfect. Well, and um, I'm sure uh, we'll follow up with more resources in terms of what's available through SBA. But one of the things we are trying to do is really break down the silo um, so that we are seen in all the different uh, pots of money that are out there. Okay, thank you, Julie. You're welcome. Uh, I think next up is Josiah. Good afternoon, greetings everybody. Um, my name is Josiah Bruni, CEO and founder of Music Changing Lives. 
I want to thank you, CFTA, for bringing this back to the region and all the information that you're sharing with us artists. Um, I more so wanted to kind of introduce myself to the region. I have a program that we're leading here entitled State of the Youth, uh, where we're going throughout the region of Southern and Northern California, talking to students about the five issues in their communities um, that they have a problem with and using artistic expression to do this. And then five solutions we present to them like policies that can change those problems and their issues. And so reaching out to the region and all the artists on the call today, uh, I'll drop it in the chat so you could see it and become a part of the discussion with us. Uh, but we have funding to go out to schools, community centers, uh, recreation centers, apartment complexes, and take these surveys and find out what our youth would want uh, to change it in our region. And we're calling on our uh, leaders on this call as well to start truly leading with us with a true heart uh, and becoming uh, that voice and ear for us, right? Uh, we're all doing our work, as Julie said earlier, to prove that we are second responders and that we deserve a right at the table, at least a dollar increase. If you could make a post about that, tag your, new go uh, your governor uh, about that, say, hey, push the limit for us. But most importantly, as well as our SLPs, to start, you know, really listening to what the community is bringing. Uh, stop stealing ideas and intellectual properties and things of that nature and work with us wholeheartedly. Uh, and that would be a beautiful start on this uh, call today. And so I love you all. And if I don't know you, know again, I'm Josiah Bruni, CEO and founder of Music Changing Lives. And we're looking to bring the state of the youth throughout Southern and Northern California with you all. God bless. Thanks so much, Josiah. Um, and the SLP is a state local partner, which is your local arts council. Um, essentially, they have a designation from their county um, and they are under the California Arts Council. It's a program under the California Arts Council. All right, Nancy Carroll. Thank you so much. Um, I have so many questions. I'll try to be very brief. Um, SLP is a perfect segue for me. Uh, I just learned on a prior conference call about SLPs. So I tried to investigate the SLP that would be my tier or regional SLP. And um, there was nothing on their website on how I could connect with them. There was no contact information and no names that I could connect with. I'm in Riverside County. So if there's anybody that is part of the SLP in Riverside County, uh, please let me know. I have been working as executive director for a nonprofit in the arts that is in our region that actually represents about 20 or more individual artists. Uh, we have a nonprofit gallery that is a, a business that's been struggling through COVID. Uh, we have uh, dance partners, we have so many people that we're the link to actually those local artists. And I'm grossly unprepared, that's me, I'm grossly unprepared for making all of the positive connections that I can through the SLP and through other avenues to try to transmit as much of these wonderful resources as I can. So uh, I'll put my email up in the chat and anybody who has any contact information that would help me, I'll dig in, I'll work at it. But I thank you all for the clarity of the presentation today. But I have to tell you, there's so many wonderful things out there and I'm just feeling a bit like the weak link right now to trying to figure out how to get that and pull it all from you who are in charge of this presentation and actually make it effective on the grassroots area of artists that I feel so responsible for. So that's my big question. Thank yeah. you all. Yeah, thanks Nancy for that. And I, I think, um, I'm not sure if we have a Riverside State Local Partner represented here today. Um, but um, I think, you know, consistently we are hearing this, which is part of why we do these regional conversations, is really to try and make those connections um, as much as possible. But we definitely hear that, you know, it's, 
yes, we need more resources, of course, but we also need to make sure that there is access to the resources. So sometimes the problem is the access and sometimes the problem is the lack of resources. So um, for sure, I think that's something that we're all conscious of and trying to, um, to improve our communications and how do we really do effective outreach. So um, it looks like you just received the Riverside Arts Council email in the chat, so. Yes, I'll, I'll mute again. Um, I'm gonna go back and write it all down. Thank you all for being here. Of course, yeah. So again, this is your time to talk. Um, we yesterday we had Central, uh, Val Central California conversation. We had lots of people um, sharing with them, uh, sharing with us what's happening uh, for them in their region. Would love to hear from you whether you are um, what you're doing and and what uh, can public funding or public resources support in this area. Patricia. Patricia. Uh, yes, I just unmuted. Uh, I just want to say how thrilling it is. Um, I've been watching um, what's been happening for the last uh, 25 years that I've been in California. And it's really quite astonishing how much money is pouring into the arts. And I think uh, a huge part of that is due to the efforts from the California for the Arts and the California Arts Council. So I wanted to give a big congratulations to your team for all the effective advocacy that you've done. Here in San Diego, we're very pleased this year to have established a new Office of Arts and Culture on the county level. And we're hoping that that will become a new state local partnership for the, for the county of San Diego. Plus, we're uh, unbelievably pre pleased to have um, not only some cultural districts located in San Diego that we're hoping we'll get more money and that program will be expanded, but also um, be the recipient of about four and a half million dollars from the Creative Corps with Imperial County. So uh, just astonishing, wonderful news in the very local local, local area. I'd also like to share our good news. I live in Encinitas, California, actually Cardiff by the sea. And our little city has just granted us um, $7 million to build an art center in Encinitas. So everything looks like it's coming up roses, even though there's lots of um, challenges in the world. But I think um, I'm very grateful for the, all the work that you've done. And also uh, very happy that we have so much to celebrate in this up upcoming holiday season. So thank you. That's wonderful to hear and very positive. I'm happy to, to share always positive news. That's uh, really, really important for all of us. Um, others, anything you wanna add to the question? conversation? One question. Sure. Um, I, this is the first time I hear about state local partners. Can you explain a little bit more what they are? Sure. Um, so essentially there is this, what we call the state arts agency, right? They're uh, okay. underneath the state government is called the California Arts Council, right? Like you have okay. small business administration, you have parks and rec as state agencies, there's the California Arts Council. Inside right. the California Arts Council, they have a program called State Local Partners. And there are 54 state local partners. There's 58 counties in the state of California. 54 out of 58 currently have state local partners, which receive a designation from their county to then be um, the local version of our state agency in a sense. They're kind of like the boots on the ground. And they're really there to provide um, services like grant writing and to be um, your local countywide arts agency. Um, and um, they also do advocacy. They do some, some of them do re-granting. So, it, and I'm sure there's other, there are here, some who are here who could speak up and share more of what, what you do as well. Um, but there are a number of them here. So if that does that make sense in terms of what a state local partner? It's like your local arts council. I see. In in Los Angeles, that's the Los Angeles Art Council, or do we have so someone? It's the else? county, um, the Department of Arts and Culture, the Los Angeles Dep the County Department of Arts and Culture is the state local partner for Los Angeles County. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. 
Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, hey, Steve. Thanks, uh, Julie. Give me a chance to just touch base with everyone. Um, the Veterans Art Project is an innovation funded uh, project for veterans mental health and wellness through the Mental Health Services Oversight Accountability Commission. Um, and it was an outgrowth of what the California Arts Council did with the Veterans Initiative in the Arts. Um, I've spoken at the Arts Council meetings numerous times, and they're currently not going to fund that at the state level, but they are talking about kicking that down to the county, which Christine makes it very interesting for us in San Diego County, since we don't have a county arts council. We have city arts council, so it makes it funny that how can we continue that type of funding requests happening for the veterans? Um, last time I was on the funding panel with Jason Jong, uh, I think 58 programs were funded statewide. 12 of them were in San Diego County, so we do have that as a as a model to be looking at, and and just a, one other nod. Um, you know, our statewide event was on October 12th. We had over 200 uh, participants and uh, showing up on the west steps of the state capitol uh, with 40 different veteran artists doing spoken word, drumming circle, singing, dancing, um, static displays, sculpture, painting. It was really a wonderful day. And um, that's all. Thanks for letting me share. Thanks, Steve. So what you're saying is CAC, the California Arts Council is no longer going to be doing the um, veterans. Yeah, in the, the, yeah, the VIA, they're not going to. Um, well, last I heard, they weren't going to fund it at the state level because they were concerned about expanding the size of government. I mean, they were at capacity and that they were kicking that down to county level, uh, which is great. Um, so. OK, great. Thank you. Uh, looks like Phyllis. Hi, everybody. Uh, forgive me for being unseen on Zoom. I'm having Zoom problems, as you often do. Um, my name is Phyllis Owens, and I'm the Vice President of Business Development and Strategic Initiatives at Community Partners. Um, it's really nice to meet all of you here. We um, are a fiscal intermediary and a fiscal sponsor, and we were selected um, by Creative Arts Corps to be um, a third-party administrator to regrant funds in LA and Orange County. Um, I don't know if you, I think it was mentioned briefly what Creative Arts Corps was all about, but they are distributing funds to both arts and social service organizations and to individual art and artists and cultural workers throughout the state. And they're you know, picking a TPA for each region. So the idea is for these organizations and or artists to develop media outreach and engagement campaigns that speak to their goals, which are around there were a number of them, but um, there's like public awareness related to water and energy conservation, climate, civic engagement, election participation, and the area we chose, which is around social justice and community engagement. So we're just, you know, we were just awarded the funds. We're just starting to talk to them about how to design this program. There'll probably be a while between, you know, design and outreach, maybe through Oct October of this year through January um, with an application launching next year, probably in February, and the launch and the selection going on between February and May. So, you know, I'll get, I'll keep you all posted on, on how that's going, um, but we're excited about participating in this, um, and we look forward to the regranting opportunity. We're going to offer granting, but also mentorship and professional development. That's a strategy that we have that's part of this, um, and we're really interested in appreciating the arts as a critical space in modern social justice movements. So we're developing a, an equity-centered regranting and mentorship program. Um, and we have a lot of experience with regranting programs throughout Los Angeles County um, and with nonprofit, small nonprofit organizations serving marginalized communities in Southern California and statewide. So we're really excited about this. And I'll keep you posted. <laughs> uh, hi, Hi, Phyllis, it's Tracy. I'm glad to see you're on the call. We had a whole section introducing Creative Core folks just after this portion. So if you get your video working, love for you to pop back on and say hi. I'll prompt you with the opportunity and uh, I'll need your contact information too. So we'll, I'll connect with you often. Glad you're here. Thank you. 
Okay, and my colleague um, Yvonne Gallardo is is also on here as well. So if you could give it to her as well, it would be helpful. Awesome. I have another meeting, but I'll try to pop out <laughs> if I can. But maybe Yvonne can attend. But yeah, if um, you could put the organization's contact information and um, into the chat as well, because we save all the chat and then we share it afterwards with everyone in context of what it is. So that would be terrific as well. So we're gonna, um, unless it, if there's, I've got about a minute left, if anyone else has anything else they'd like to share at this point in terms of what's happening for you, this is really helpful in terms of insight uh, for us as well, because we clearly as a statewide advocacy organization, we can't be all over the state, it's enormous. So these regional conversations give us an opportunity to pop, pop around the state and hear from you. So anything else you wanna share, you can also share in the chat and you can always reach out to us, please. We wanna hear from you. So at this point too, we're gonna to transition to the next five minutes and we're gonna put into the chat um, a survey link. Um, and that is, we ask you to take the next five minutes to hopefully if not complete, at least start the survey. This is really critical and again, in terms of how we gather information to that inform our programs and our policy development. So if you would, um, please take the next five minutes. I'm sure someone on the team is about to put this in the chat. Um, and we can go ahead and go and do the survey for the next five minutes. Can someone on the team add that? There you go. Can you put it a couple of times in there? So that would be great. And if you would click on the link and take the next five minutes, we would really, really appreciate your participation. And then we'll get to introducing you to more folks who are doing the creative core, as well as the creative economy, uh, creative economy, community economic resiliency fund uh, across the state. Thanks. I feel like I'm taking the LSAT test and there's a time on it. You can actually, you're welcome to just leave the survey open. If you feel like you wanna take the time, I'll leave it open in your browser and, and complete it later as well.
Okay, everyone, thank you so much for taking the time. And again, you can leave your survey open and complete it if you need, if you need more time. And it's just so important to get that those insights from you and help shape our work. Um, I'm gonna, really excited to kick off the next portion of our agenda, uh, discussing regional initiatives. And as you're hearing from Julie, you know, it's super, oh, first of all, I'm Tracy Hudak, uh, Manager of Programs and Organizational Advancement uh, covering the Southern California region for the state. And I'm zooming in from Santa Paula and Ventura County, the sacred ancestral lands of the Chumash. And uh, to reiterate or build on what Julie's been talking about, Californians for the Arts is deeply committed to increasing awareness and investment in the value that the arts bring to our communities, economies, health and well being uh, of our society. And this work demands developing new partnerships across different sectors and developing programs that are innovative and that measure success, not just in numbers, but in human terms, in the, in the way that real work impacts folks. We're very excited to introduce you to partners and initiatives that we believe will strengthen California while creating opportunities for arts workers, cultural bearers, cultural organizations across our state. So first, we're going to um, uh, our friends at GoBiz and California Forward will introduce themselves, tell you about their work, and and then we'll learn about Surf, the Community Economic Resilience Fund, and how to get involved. And we will meet some of the leaders who are developing the California Creative Core program. After these introductions, we'll provide their contact information in the sli in slides that you will get in the follow up email. <clears throat> and uh, let's see. Yeah, da, da, da. And we'll also direct you some resources that we've developed to support you in engaging in this cross-sector work. So first, I'd like to introduce you to introduce you to Matthew Mena from GoBiz, the Governor's Office for Business and Economic Development. Matthew is the Southern California Regional Manager for their Community and Place-Based Solutions Unit. Welcome, Matthew. Hi. Thank you very much. Yeah, so the, uh, we call it CPBS because that's just a mouthful. Um, so our team is actually, we have um, an individual uh, in each of the surf regions. So we have an individual in all 13 regions. Um, and for Southern California, which I manage the team, we have individuals in LA County, the Inland Empire, Orange County, and the Southern border. Um, our role at GoBiz, it's really to... Um, it's really to help local communities and um, community-based organizations along with the arts, which is something that hasn't been touched on in historically in economic development, um, to help find funds and secure funding for their programs. Uh, this came out of um, during COVID when we were uh, responding to many different requests, we realized that local governments and organization, community-based organizations didn't have that same reach as businesses do. And so we created this team through an EDA um, grant. Um, another portion of GoBiz is we are part of the interagency uh, unit or committee that is implementing SURF at the state level. And so we are uh, part of the steering committee. So we have we are part of the development of the SURF grant itself, the implementation funds and the planning funds. Um, GoBiz itself is working on the technical assistance portion of SURF. And so we are, as I said before, each of our representatives in all 13 regions will help the SURF tables bring in those partners that will give the table itself a more holistic view of economic development um, and really kind of moving away from that status quo of um, of just bringing in funds to develop jobs for corporations, really bringing in jobs to help revitalize communities. Um, and these funds can go from anything to uh, training centers to really just meeting uh, the community where they are. Um, and so, yeah, that is, uh, that's what we do at uh, our organization. Uh, but GoBiz is a huge, uh, a huge unit agency at the state. And so we have individuals who are doing business development. Um, we have individuals who are helping with uh, zero admissions vehicle adoption. Um, we have uh, an actual bank that helps with uh, securing funds for local communities as well as businesses. Um, and pretty much anything under the sun we can do. 
um, or we will help you get in contact with those individuals that do it. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Matthew, for saying hello. And uh, just as a, a quick quiver, uh, the CERF is the Community and Economic Resilience Fund program. It is a, a state program that is going to be distributing $600 million into economic development projects uh, in with, across 13 regions in the state. And we've set up some resources to support. Um, we're partnering with the economic development leaders they want arts folks at the table. Um, the goal is inclusive, sustainable economic development. And um, so we'll, we'll have more to, to roll out and say about that shortly, but I just wanted to make sure folks knew what that was as we're talking. And then, uh, and actually probably a great person to, to uh, fill in some more on that is Annalisa, uh, Annalisa Saragar Worm from California Forward. California Forward is a statewide movement to bring people together across communities, regions, and interests to improve government and create inclusive, sustainable growth in our local economies, uh, local and state. And uh, California Forward is the organization that just partnered with us and Arts for LA to launch the state's first ever creative economy working group. Um, so we're very, very excited to introduce you to Annalisa. Thank you so much, Tracy. Um, and thank you, Julie, Tracy, and the entire team um, at CFTA for this invitation um, to speak on just this exciting time um, in, I think, California history. Um, but we're really grateful for the partnership here. Um, as Tracy mentioned, my name is Annalisa. I'm on the regional stewardship team with California Forward, um, a nonprofit organization, um, as you heard, working to build an equitable, equitable economies throughout the state. Um, and as part of that, we really believe that the creative arts um, are a full sector in their own right um, and have a very important place in our economies. We know that too often folks um, think of the arts as, as fun or optional um, without realizing and understanding the value and impact um, in multiple facets of life. Um, we're committed to supporting the creative sector um, in our state. Um, as you heard, we recently launched um, a very fun um, session with DJ and all at um, our annual California Economic Summit in Bakersfield last month um, to kind of highlight this work um, throughout the regions. Um, and I'd like to also acknowledge Gustavo Herrera, um, who is the CEO of Arts for LA. Um, he sits on our board of directors for our or organization. Um, and our goal as an organization is really to support regions, um, and we do that by supporting you all. Um, SURF, as you heard, is a unique opportunity um, to advance quality of life in regions, um, and we think the creative economy plays a central role in that. Um, we understand that this is done in part through artist entrepreneurship, um, which promotes both civic and social capital in regions, in addition to providing sizable economic value um, to regions as well. So we're sharing that message across the state. We were excited to partner with CFTA earlier this year um, for a series of surf listening sessions ahead of the surf SFP that came out this year. Um, and in our work, we continue year in year out to serve as an intermediary, right, um, between the state and Matt and his team um, and the regions on the ground um, to think through um, and provide a variety of supports um, as folks think about their goals, their regional projects, um, ideas that really center um, what we believe SURF is and other opportunities um, in the past few years, which is that this is a great opportunity for regions to come together um, across a variety of stakeholders, including the arts for the betterment of the whole region. I'm so happy to connect you. Um, I know Matt and I are talking all the time, um, but you can see my information in chat um, along with our organizational website, um, and we can help you connect um, to a SURF regional convener as well. Thanks, Tracy. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you so much, and thank you for your partnership. Um, we're uh, excited also to introduce you to some of the other leaders, uh, administrating organizations of the California Creative Corps program. Um, just to add one more point of background, because it's come up a couple of times, it's the Economic and Workforce Recovery Pilot Program intended to hire creative workers to assist in environmental, civic, and social engagement in California's most disproportionately impacted communities. It's a program developed by California Arts Council with the state legislature. 
So some of the leaders are here to introduce themselves and their programs. And just to reiterate, these are all brand new programs that they were the AOs, the organizations were just recently announced, um, guidelines, grant applications, none of that has been developed yet. And folks are in different stages in terms of um, uh, having channels to contact and connect and get information. So we're just going to get a quick introduction and hello and hear a little bit about these programs. And then we'll be following up with you with additional information as it rolls out. So first, I'd like to uh, um, invite Ana Maria Luera. Um, from Center for Cultural Power to speak. Um, she is one of the state, or the Center for CCP is one of the statewide organizations. Anna, are you uh, still in Belua? Do you wouldn't mind saying hi? Hi. Do you wanna? Yep, I can go. Hey, my name is Ana Maria Luera. I'm the Director of Artist Leadership at the Center for Cultural Power. And at the Center for Cultural Power, we build the power of artists of color to shape stories that shift culture from domination towards justice and collaboration. And through the um, California Creative Core program will provide 76 artists in impacted California regions with cohort awards and fellowships. Um, artists will build their leadership and capacity to develop artistic content that in that advances health equity, climate justice, civic engagement, and social justice in and for their own communities. And with our um, cohort awards over the next two years, we'll be able to offer 72 awards of $15,000 in impacted areas in California. And then these artists will be integrated into our cohorts, um, which is designed to build a um, sp supportive relationship between awardees. And all of us at the Center for Cultural Power, we're all artists ourselves. Um, and so we work really hard to disrupt the isolation that can come from being a creative um, or a cultural organizer. And in these cohorts, artists will share ideas, they'll receive mentorship, and all while building their um, creative entrepreneur practice. In our Constellations Fellowship, four fellows will be integrated as cultural power staff in a continued 18-month salaried fellowship. And the fellowship also includes project implementation funding that works to shift public opinion in public health, climate, social issues, while being supported by in a cohort of artists and culture bearers. And as part of the fellowship, the fellows will also have access to our nationwide network of culture and narrative strategy leaders. And we'll work in partnership with a local organization to create content and just experiment with the most impactful strategies to further their social justice work in, um, in their community. Thank you. Thank you, Ana Maria. And uh, Jan Williamson from 18th Street Arts um, Center. Jan is also, their program is also a statewide program. I'll let me take it from here, Jan. Thank hey, Tracy, thank you so much. Um, yeah, uh, Jan Williamson, I'm the executive director at 18th Street Arts Center based in Santa Monica. And our mission is to provoke public dialogue through contemporary art making. We've been around for 33 years. We're primarily known as an artist residency program and we also commission artists to do social impact projects. In the last eight years, we've been doing um, really deep community uh, cultural asset mapping in Santa Monica and working with many partners. And so we're taking that ex expertise, which has had all of these uh, benefits in public policy and um, uh, surfacing community histories in Santa Monica that are under recognized and underrepresented. Um, we're taking that to the statewide level. So we're really excited about hiring artists across California in different communities that will be developing projects and, and our wraparound uh, services are gonna be teaching them the skills and tools of cultural asset mapping and how that can start to weave and create new cultural infrastructure in a community, which we have many examples of how that specifically um, can uh, uh, deepen community health and well-being. And part of our expertise in that area has been um, working with the city of Santa Monica's 
well-being project, which is uh, a, a project that the city and Rand Corporation developed to really study how arts and culture, um, um, among other things, develop well-being in a in a community. So we'll be hiring artists um, full time with health benefits and um, to really be rooted and working in their community in this way. Thank you for sharing that. Excellent. And, um, and then I'd like to pass the mic to Jennifer Kane. Jennifer is with Arts Connection San Bernardino and part of the Inland SoCal Creative Core Collaborative. And Jennifer, if you wanna, there you go, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> thanks. I, um, so first of all, I should say that we are not, uh, our organization's not the administrative organization on record where um, that was the Inland Empire Community Foundation. Um, and then it's comprised of um, a tri-council in the region of the California Desert Arts Council, the Riverside County Arts Council, as well as Arts Connection, which serves and represents San Bernardino County. Um, so yeah, as you mentioned, Tracy, this is a new program and we've started meeting with the state reps for this program. They have new staff members specifically assigned to this program. Um, the funding has not been given to the administrative organizations yet. So we are in limbo a little bit, but we've started um, designing some of what we're calling the co-design elements of what we're planning to do in terms of um, at least 10 regional listening sessions. Um, we're building out a community design team who will help co-write the application itself. Um, we didn't go into this thinking that we knew what the community wanted this program to look like. So we are asking them and we'll be inviting them to help design it for themselves. Um, and all of those positions will be stipend very well. Um, so the admin money is being distributed to community members to co-design with us. Um, and then the rest of it will be redistributed to individual artist fellowships of twenty-five dollars to $50,000 each, as well as uh, arts organizations and non Art or arts adjacent social service organizations across the whole region. So we're very excited. We've just, uh, we're on the cusp of hiring a design team to help with thinking through the branding as well as the messaging. We have a multilingual um, messaging company based in the region helping us design the outreach as well as the campaign to lift up the artists who are gonna be hired to do all of this work. Um, we've done, we've also started reaching out directly to each of the cities um, to let them know about this program because we really help, we really do see this as a, an opportunity to see those creative strategist programs that are that have been so successful in regions like LA um, to start embedding artists within um, county as well as civic agencies and to see the power of the work that they can do. Um, so we're hoping to see some of those piloted through this money. Great, thanks for the update. Uh, next, Griselda Suarez from Arts Council for Long Beach. Um, say hello and introduce your program. Hello. Um, buenas tardes. Um, you know, it's so wonderful to hear um, our, our colleagues and partners. It seems like many of us are very much aligned. Um, at the Arts Council for Long Beach, I'm the executive director. Um, we are excited about this project because we really do believe in ensuring that um, artists are supported and that new artists are, are brought into the community and that arts, which are really critical for a vibrant and diverse community thrive in our city. And so we're glad to bring this lens uh, to the Creative Core program. Um, we know that this money, this funnel is going to um, enrich the quality of life of many residents and, and the artists and the community organizations that, that will be on this journey with us. Um, and part of this is also our, our value of making sure that there is a universal access. And so looking at the application, looking at community meetings, I'm so happy I'm also hearing other colleagues talk about those community meetings. Um, for us, it's very important. Now for our creative core, um, program, it's very much based on our current grant making. Um, <clears throat> and we will be focusing on the five priorities. I think what's really important for us is that we um, do extensive outreach to community-based organizations, to social service organizations, um, so that we really know what is the need in, in, in our lives right now with everything that has transpired. Um, 
and we will be offering uh, paid positions to community facilitators so that when artists are identified through their own grant application, um, that they're not coming into the community, not knowing, unconnected, um, very much not feeling like this is just plopping someone into um, an organization, an issue or, or a community. And so we think that's very unique to, to our process. Um, when we uh, come together as this core court, um, we wanna see success two years down the line when a community-based organization can then continue working with artists or performers, because this will be open for um, many genres and disciplines. And we want to be able to have them continue doing this work and incorporate arts and culture into their own um, organization, as well as ensuring that artists and performers have the skills, um, the training to continue offering these kinds of services to other organizations and within other issues. Um, we are working with many of our community partners and other local arts agencies. So far, we have met with a few just to brainstorm and also see how we can outreach to underserved areas. Um, and being that we are in Long Beach, um, I think our connection to the 710 um, corridor, but also to Orange County, I think it would be interesting to see how the outreach uh, works with all of our partners and colleagues here. So thank you very much for having us here today. Thank you for being here and introducing the program to everyone. And uh, uh, last but not least, we'd love to in, um, invite Christine Jones from the San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture to speak on their program that they're developing. Thank you, Tracy. Um, so, you know, as my peers, um, other administrating organizations, we're thrilled to finally see this money coming down the pipeline and being able to uh, work with artists at this level. So um, at the city of San Diego, we were awarded the administrative uh, uh, grant to basically launch what we're calling, um, we have a special name for our creative core program called Far South Border North, Artists and Cultural Practitioners in Community. And it's essentially like the others, a regranting program. Ours is specific to the Far South region, which was designated by the California Art Council. So it's comprised of San Diego and Imperial counties. And so um, San Diego and Imperial County artists, individual artists and cultural practitioners, as well as organizations, local and tribal governments here um, are able to hire artists who these artists will again be carrying out those media outreach and engagement campaigns. And we are really um, creating a broad brush. We're gonna allow artists to kind of figure out which focus area they're really interested in and really want to explore further, whether that's public health or civic engagement, social justice, um, or climate and conservation and energy. So to implement the program, we've developed a bi-county partnership uh, with primary partners being Catalyst of San Diego and Imperial Counties, the San Diego Regional Arts and Culture Coalition, and the San Diego Foundation. So we're really looking at this as a bi-county effort partnership that will involve government, foundation, community collaboration, really in an effort to support artists and cultural practitioners doing the work, um, helping to support the health and well-being of communities and specifically in the lowest quartile of uh, the California Healthy Places Index in San Diego County and Imperial Counties. And that, that is dictated by CAC for all of us to be working on um, as administering organizations in the specific areas where we serve. These artists, again, will really create campaigns that raise awareness, engage and inspire. And we really are wanting to also to encourage and en enriching uh, the creative and artistic and cultural practices of these artists and cultural practitioners. So our program is really a job creation, an infrastructure development opportunity. These grantees will become cohorts. I've heard that word before, but they're gonna become parts of cohorts and they're gonna participate in what we're calling social impact hubs. And these are hubs are operated by social service organizations that might be focused on public health. There might be one focused on climate and energy and renewable energy. There might be one on civic engagement and election participation. And the, we'll be pairing artists and cultural practitioners with these hubs. These hubs will serve kind of as the, um, um, again, in San Diego and Imperial counties. And they'll really be a place for these artists to 
to come together, to be mentored, to learn for resources, uh, network opportunities where they'll scope and incubate their ideas. We'll have some cross-pollination opportunity amongst the hubs to share out and learn before they actually start implementing their, their campaigns and communities. And then along with that, we'll be doing campaigns and storytelling, mapping, and um, culminating a public impact day toward the end of the two-year grant period. So we're just in the, you know, we're as uh, the other organizations, we're in the development stage, but we anticipate launch um, as do everybody else because it's mandated by our grant to launch in winter of 2023. So if you're in San Diego County or Imperial County um, and you have questions, feel free to reach out to me directly. Great, thank you so very much. Um, our uh, Phyllis Owen or Yvonne Giardo from Community Partners, do you wanna say hello in, in this section as well? Hi everyone, it's good to be with you all today and to see familiar faces as Phyllis shared. Um, we are at the beginning stages of this project. This is literally my first week with community partners. So there's a lot to take in, but also really good to hear the approach and perspectives of the other administering um, organizations. And so I'm looking forward to making um, the intra program connections and then also um, working with folks both in LA County and Orange County um, from the very beginning of the design stages. So happy to be here, learning a lot, um, and I'll hand it back to you, Tracy. Great, great. Thank you, everyone. It's just so inspiring and moving to hear um, how responsive and innovative and unique each of the programs are and, and what's being created on the, on, on the ground now. This is amazing infrastructure that you're all creating. Um, so very excited to hear from you. And Eddie, if you wouldn't mind firing up the slides and thank you for, we just have so much great information to share. We really appreciate folks who are hanging in. We just have a couple more minutes. Um, wanted to um, let you know what will be coming to you in the email um, in terms of the contact information for the folks that you just met. And uh, we'll have Matthew Menes content. Oh, you can go ahead to the next one. Thanks, Eddie. And then um, the next slide, I got community partners on there. Thank you so much for being here. And then I just wanted to share with you, we have a new webpage, um, Arts and Economic Development, and it has resources about the community and the SURF program, as well as case making and data sources and we're crowdsourcing um, those materials as well uh, if you want to add to the website but some in this in this one sheet this two this two pager about how to participate in arts and economic development or we're naming how you're already doing that work um, for economic development leaders in the one sheet so that that's a resource that's handy for you and you can also contact us uh, for follow-up etc and uh, next slide. Great. And I'll hand it back over to Julie. Yeah, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone who showed up here today. There are about 250 people who signed up, and so they'll all be receiving all this information. And we encourage you to share it with everyone as well who was not here today. And make sure that uh, these resources that have been shared in terms of the excitement around the California Creative Corps, was so great to hear about it coming to fruition. And also uh, the SURF program and all the work that GoBiz is doing and all the amazing programs that California Arts Council offers, as well as the Small Business Administration, everything else else that is at, um, available for you. And the things that are not, that's also what we need to hear about. What's it, you know, falling through the cracks, where, where, where do we need to, to uplift and um, get other things out in terms of educating uh, policymakers to what's happening for our sector. So um, we encourage you to get involved in Californians for the Arts and California for Arts Advocates, become a member, share our social media po um, posts, join the Creative Economy Working Group and um, get involved in what we're calling a new program, RAIN, which is Regional Advocacy Infrastructure Networks. We're just building that out, but that is so that we can continue these regional conversations in a way that actually provides um, local advocacy for you. Of course, you have an amazing organization called Arts for LA in uh, LA County, but in other areas, um, we don't have always that level of regional advocacy. So we're also looking to build that out. If you're interested in any of this, please contact us and join us in April for Arts, Culture, and Creativity Month. We're gonna let you go. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks to all the CFTA staff, everyone who's at the core program, all of our funders, members, and everyone else who makes it possible for us to deliver these programs for free across the state of California. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.